So what are the outcomes of progressive MS and how do you measure them? Well, the bad thing is once somebody's entered a progressive stage, we can't stop the gradual worsening. We can slow it, we hope, with treatment, but we can't stop it. So what are you measuring? You're measuring the quantitative neurological exam, and as Tom pointed out, things like 25-foot time walk can be very good. Nine-hole peg test to evaluate hand function can be very good. Simple digit modality test just takes a few minutes, can be done in the outpatient department, and is a way to monitor cognitive function. So these are clinical things that we would monitor. All right, can you, there's another acronym. We are, we are filled with them today. NIDA, no evidence of disease activity. What's that? So that's really a compilation of the major clinical and MRI outcomes. So it's no clinical attack, no confirmed worsening on the EDSS, no new MRI lesion. And that's an interesting measure for clinical trials. I think it's a little bit too rigorous for clinical utility because a cohort of MS patients can't truly maintain NIDA for a long time. It's saying that if you have a single new MRI lesion, you failed NIDA. You haven't met it. And that's just too rigorous. None of our treatments are said to be absolute cures. You also heard clearly from Pac Hoyle's description, no MRI activity, no disability progression, no new attack. What about the cognition? This all describes how you show up in the office. It doesn't tell what you do when you are in the office. And so NIDA in itself is a, is a conflagration of different outcomes and it needs to be used in a clinical trial environment. I don't think it is ready for the in-practice environment. And I don't want to leave this topic without another term of art, which is brain preservation. My understanding of this disease is that little by little, uncontrolled, it chips away and your brain is not preserved. And the object here is to preserve as much neurologic function as possible. Does this make anatomic sense? Yes, this makes anatomic sense and uh, it makes particular anatomic sense from the discussions that we had that MS is no longer just a white matter disease. As we understand, it was always not just a white matter disease, but it's a white matter and gray matter disease. I think there is another term uh, is neurological reserve and it may very well be that different individuals have different neurological reserves and that injury that is absorbed by one person more easily, I'm not saying well, uh, is leading to significant injury in another person. So we're the makeup, but these are terms that are just emerging. Uh, I do think that brain preservation is important, but it goes essentially to the other concept, maintaining of function.